It is crazy that just two short years ago, consumer grade 3D scanning was just a pipe dream. But when Revopoint launched their POP2 3D scanner, I feel like that was a turning point in the community. Ever since then, quite a few companies have released their own 3D scanners, but none of them really hold significant weight in the community to me because Revopoint seems to be the only one that actually takes their user feedback seriously. So the Inspire is really interesting to me because I don't know where it really stands in the lineup. That's because Revopoint already has the Mini for tiny objects, the Pop 3 for medium objects, and then the Range for large objects. So really, where does the Inspire stand? Ultimately, I think this play is really for Revopoint to just reach a broader audience. And that's because this scanner is going to come in at $439 US, which is definitely touching budget territory, especially when you consider other products in this space. So I am no stranger to 3D scanning. The Inspire is my fifth 3D scanner. And it's still difficult for me to talk about specs because to me, the hardware isn't the whole story. If you have software that can't keep up with the hardware, then the scanner is no more than a paperweight. The first being that the Inspire can scan between 14 and 18 frames per second, which is incredibly important for tracking. And it's common to see consumer scanners reach 10 frames per second, but that just simply isn't enough data to track an object well. Ultimately, that is gonna lead to more failed scans than successful ones. And when the Inspire peaks at 18 frames per second, that is 180% of the data as compared to those other scanners. So trust me when I say this is a huge win for the Inspire. Another important spec to mention is going to be the single frame capture details. And the Inspire, it can capture 240 by 130 millimeters in a single frame with up to 0.2 millimeters of accuracy. Seeing as there are other scanners that can capture between 0.02 and 0.05 millimeters, this is definitely going to be a limiting factor of the Inspire. So the scan volume can be adjusted ever so slightly within Revoscan 5, but it is definitely important to mention that the Inspire is designed for medium sized objects. So the minimum scan size is going to be 50 millimeters cubed and the maximum is going to be 2000 millimeters cubed, but those should definitely be your edge cases. So how does the scanner perform in practice? Well, to put it simply, very, very well. Without going into great detail, an IMU is a sensor that's going to measure positional data in relation to your scanner's orientation, velocity, and gravitational forces. So Revopoint is going to utilize that sensor to better track the object being scanned, which is going to make your scanning significantly easier. And as compared to a scanner without an IMU, the Inspire Fire clearly tracks easier. Now for my results, and well, they're exactly as you would expect from my budget 3D scanner. Due to the 0.2 millimeter accuracy, a lot of sharp detail is going to be smoothed out, but that doesn't inherently mean the Inspire is a bad product. You really need to use the right tool for the job, and if you want to preserve lots of fine detail, well, you should be looking more towards a product like the Revopoint Mini. And as for my initial experience, you probably aren't going to want to believe me, but no more than three minutes after I took the Inspire out of the box, I had this entire frog 3D scanned. So this object is tremendously ugly, but for a 3D scanner, this is a very good torture test. That is because the grass at the base of this model is highly detailed and only the most capable and accurate 3D scanners are going to be able to replicate this data. You can see the grass in the final scan has been significantly smoothed over, but for anyone that actually cares, this should be able to be added back in in post-processing in only 10 or 15 minutes. But consider this, if you're going to be 3D scanning in order to print on an FDM printer, you're probably printing at 0.2 millimeter layers anyway, so why should you be required to scan at a higher level of detail than you can print? So what about dark scans? Well, a lot of common 3D scanners can't handle dark objects, and unfortunately, the Inspire is in the same boat. The boots on this frog are black, and unfortunately, the scanner can't pick them up. So in the final scan, the body of the frog is just floating like a ghost. The good news is this problem can very easily be fixed by using some AE Sub Blue or some dry hair shampoo. So if you look closely at the physical design of the frog, it really doesn't have much detail. A lot of the detail comes by way of color. 
This is a tremendously difficult task to convey over camera, but I would say other than the boots and the grass, this scan of the frog is almost identical to the original one. So after the frog, I jumped right into a particularly complicated job. In fact, this is the most complex 3D scan I've ever attempted. This chair is 1050 by 610 by 610 millimeters, and it took 26 individual scans to be merged together to create one final model. This job took me roughly three hours to complete, but that includes time to add 350 tracking markers, as well as all the computer computational processing time. After completing this job once, I believe if I were to 3D scan this chair a second time, that I could probably save a whole entire hour on the process, and I could probably get an even better final result. During this process, I used RevaPoint's feature tracking scan option, as well as their marker tracking scan option. And during merging, I also used feature merging and marker merging. While Revapoint claims that this is well within the bounds of the Inspire's capability, I really think that this is pushing the envelope. That being said, based on 26 individual scans being merged together, I am blown away with the final result. Because this isn't a review of RevoScan 5, I really don't want to talk too much about it. However, I do personally believe that the software is far more important than the hardware in the scanner. So let's dive in. If you've ever used a CAD tool like Fusion 360 or Onshape or any of the other CAD tools, then RevoScan 5 is going to be very, very familiar to you. The left panel is going to contain all of your individual scans as well as all of your merged scans. And you can easily scroll through this section like a history window in any other parametric CAD software. When you select a scan, the middle panel is going to populate with the data. And then the top panel is going to contain all of the tools and functions you can perform on the requested data. These tools are fairly basic in operation, but if you're an advanced user, you can open the advanced settings and then you can go and modify all of the parameters in order to tweak the tool's functionality. RevoScan 5 is so good, unless you're a prosumer, I honestly can't imagine anyone needing to export their point cloud for use in third-party software. However, if you require that, the capability does exist. The fully merged chair scan started incredibly ugly, but with the tools provided, I was able to clean it up significantly. And if this chair were to be used in a digital environment, then I would definitely need to do more cleanup and repair. However, for the sake of this video, I stopped here. I wanted to try another basic scan, so I tried my luck with this audio meter. And the original carrying case is very poorly designed, so in the future, I will use this scan to design a better case. So I used the included mini turntable and Bluetack, and I also opted to connect the Inspire to my cell phone and scan via the app over the Inspire's Wi-Fi 6 connectivity. After I added tracking markers to the turntable, I was able to scan this entire object in only one and a half rotations or roughly 60 seconds. It took me less than 60 seconds in RevoScan 5 to remove the background noise from when Pepper walked in frame mid-scan, as well as remove the isolated data points and perform some mesh simplification. Lastly, I imported the scan into Vision 360 to check its dimensional accuracy. From start to finish, including processing time and the dimensional accuracy check, this whole process took no more than five minutes. My time with this scanner has been nothing short of pleasant, and RevaPoint has really knocked it out of the park with this one. From the hardware features to the beautiful implementation of RevoScan 5, I honestly think this will be a fantastic tool to add to your arsenal. If you've never 3D scanned before, tame your expectations and give it the patience that it deserves and you're going to be very, very happy with this product. And before we end the video, Pepper was telling me that you guys need to like the video. Uh, so yeah, see ya.